In this presentation, we will create an amortization schedule for a bond discount. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Our information will be up here. We're going to have the face amount of the bond, 100000 the stated rate, rate on the bond, 8%, the market rate, 10%, we see the market rate is greater than the stated rate and therefore we issued it at a discount, a price lower than the face amount, in this case 96,454. We're gonna have semi-annual payments and it's a two-year bond and therefore there's four time periods. There's two years and every two times a year and therefore four time periods. We wanna see this in context by looking at a trial balance and see it within something that balances and in context. So if we were to record this on a trial balance, it would be a liability represented with credits here. We put it on the books for 100,000, but then we had to put on this discount. Why? Because we only got paid 96,454. So that means that we debited cash for 96,454. We credited the bond payable for the 100,000. And then we had to put on this discount because the difference between the 100 and the 3,546 will be the 96,454, that's gonna be the carrying amount. As the bond goes, goes through, as we go through the process of the bond, we typically make bond payments, which will be at 8%, the stated rate of the face amount of the bond, divided by two, because it's every six, uh, six months rather than a, a full year. Uh, and so we typically do not, we're not going to, in this case, pay off the principal of the bond. We're only gonna be paying interest. We're only gonna be paying like the rent on the use of the money. We're not paying back the principal. However, we do have this discount here that we gotta deal with. We gotta get rid of that somehow. It needs to go away by the end of the bond. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna reduce this? Well, one way we can do it is the straight line method. That's not the preferred method. We'll talk here about the effective method but we, it would make sense just to start there. So if we took the 3,546 and we just said, okay, I'm just gonna divide that by the number of periods, which in this case is four, two years times two uh, would be the four because uh, it's two semi-monthly. And therefore we'll just reduce that every time we make a normal interest payment. And we'll reduce it to where? We're gonna reduce this and put it to bond interest. Why does that make sense? because this thing only came about because of the difference between the rates. That's what we, that's what the, that's why it's there. So we're going to write it off throughout the bond in accordance with uh, writing it off to the interest expense as we go. Now a straight line method would just have an even amount written off and that would be, that would be fine, but it's not exact. It's not as perfect as, as using a, an effective method, which would take the carrying amount and apply out um, the proper, the interest based on the carrying amount. So if we take a look at the straight line method as a comparison, and then we'll go to the, to the effective method just to get an idea of this. Remember that we have a little table here. We're gonna say that uh, we, have the 90, we have the unamortized discount is the 3,546, which is the 100,000 minus the 96,454, giving us the carrying amount of 96,454. And that's gonna be this minus that. That's what we start off with on the table. And then we're just gonna take this 3,546 and divide it by four periods, giving us in this case 887. So if we just had 887 that we're going to reduce the unamortized amount each time by, then we would say, okay, there's 3,554 is where we started. Minus 887, we would take it down to 2,660. Then the carrying amount would be the 100,000 minus the discount, bringing us to 97,341. And then the next time period, we would say same thing, 887 is going to be reducing the unamortized discount. So the 2,660 minus the 887 brings us to 1,773. The carrying amount then would be the 100,000 minus the 1,773 or 98,227. Same thing for the fourth period, bringing the balance from 1,773 down by 887 to 887, bringing the carrying amount to 100,000 minus 887 or 99,114. And finally, one more time, we do the same thing bringing the 887 down by 887 to zero, and then the carrying amount 100,000 minus zero, leaving us with 100,000. So the point is at the end of this time period, at the end of four periods, in this case, two years, we want to be left with just the uh, bond payable, and this needs to go away because at the end of it, we're just gonna pay off the bond. So this would be like the fast or easiest way to think through this. We're gonna use the more proper method, the, the effective method, 
And the reason it's more proper is because it's going to allocate kind of like a note payable that's an installment note. It's going to allocate based on the carrying amount and therefore be more accurate in terms of the interest allocation. So let's go through this method. We're going to say that we're starting off in the same place where we've got the carrying amount. And the carrying amount will always be calculated as the 100000 minus the unamortized discount. The unamortized discount is starting off at the face amount minus the issue price. So the face amount minus the issue price is this 3546 And the carrying amount is going to be the 100000 minus the 3546 or 96545 or 96454 So under the first period, we're going to say the cash paid is 4000 now that's straightforward. It's just on the contract. So the contract says that the bond is 100,000. Then the stated rate, the rate on the contract is 8% or 0.08. That would be for a year, but it's only six months. So we have to take that and divide it by two. Other way we can calculate that is to take the yearly rate, 0.08, divided by two. And that gives us a monthly rate times the 100,000. And that'll be the 4,000. So there's that. And then the bond interest we're going to have then is going to be calculated as the carrying amount. So we're going to take this amount, 96,454 times the market rate, not the stated rate, 0.1. That would be for a year. Then we'll divide it by two because it's only six months. And there's the, the 4,822. We're, we're rounding here clearly. So then we're going to, we can also calculate that as 0.1, the market rate divided by two for six months and then times the carrying value 696,454. So there we have that. If we take the difference between those two, the 4,823 minus the 4,000 is 823. And then of course the unamortized portion 3546 is going to go down by the 823. And that'll give us the 2,723. Uh, 2, will give us this amount. And then the new carrying amount is always going to be the 100,000 face amount. And then we'll uh, always subtract out the unamortized 2723. So I'll go through the math at least one more time just because it's it's easier to, to pick these up when we see it. So we're going to say the second period, the same amount for the cash. It's always going to be the same, but it's useful to know where we're picking these up because we get these two rates mixed up. All the, uh, it's common to get those mixed up. So 100,000 face amount, not the carrying amount, the amount on the bond, this is the contract, times 0.08 divided by 2. So face amount times the contract rate. And then we're going to say that the carrying, the, the bond interest, however, is going to be the carrying amount. 97,277. This is kind of like what's actually happening according to the market, we think. And that's going to be this times the market rate, 0.1 divided by 2, 4863. And then if we subtract those two out, 4,864 minus 4,864. And then we'll have the unamortized discount, which is going to be the 2723 minus the 864, 1859. And then, of course, our carrying amount is always going to be the 100,000 face amount minus the 1859 or unamortized discount, uh, 98141. Let's do this one more time. Again, the cash, once again, is going to be the 100,000 face amount times 0.08 divided by 2, 4,000. Then the uh, bond interest is going to be 98141 times the market rate divided by 2, 4907. The difference between those two, 907. Then we're going to take this number minus the 907, giving us the 952. And then this will always be the 100 minus the unamortized discount for 9948. One more time, we're going to say 4000 for the cash. Same calculation, bond interest. It's going to be this number times the 10% market rate divided by 2. Then we'll sub then uh, we'll subtract these two out, and uh, we get to zero here because we're taking the unamortized discount minus the 952. That's what we want, of course, the unamortized amount to get to zero, and then we're left with just this 100,000. That's the bond face amount that we'll then pay off at the end of the bond. So let's see what this looks like in context. How are we going to actually use this to make journal entries? So here's our trial balance. 
here's our worksheet we're going to make this first payment so what we're doing here remember is we're, we're making an actual payment and then we're also kind of we're doing kind of two things we're doing an actual payment and then we're trying to get rid of this discount like periodically as we go so we're going to say that uh, the payment is just going to be the cash that we're going to pay cash is going down cash is debit balance we're going to credit it it's on our table it's also just on the bond the bond is a hundred thousand times the stated rate on the bond divided by two and then we're going to have the uh, bond interest expense which is given on our table now so expenses always go up we're going to debit the interest expense and then the difference is going to be the discount also on our table the four thousand plus the eight twenty three is going to match the bond interest expense here so the debits equal the credits in other words so if we post this then we're going to say the bond interest uh, is going to go up and that'll bring net income down the cash uh the cash is here bringing cash down because we're paying the interest of four thousand uh but we're paying we're paying uh four thousand but we're applying four thousand eight twenty three to interest why because we're also applying part of the discount here we're reducing the discount and applying that to the interest why does that make sense because uh the the difference here this bond discount came from the difference between the market rate and, and the stated rate on the bond so that's what we have here the the bond interest that goes up the cash goes down the bond interest is going up by more than the cash we paid because we're allocating this discount to bond interest uh, as we go through paying off the bond if we go to the second payment we'll do the same thing with the second payment now so we're jumping six months into the future now and doing the same thing I know our not not much active no activity has really happened other than our payment last six months ago but that's okay we're gonna do this again we're gonna say cash goes down so cash is gonna be decreased of course that comes from the table it's also stated we're gonna say that the bond interest is gonna come from our table and then the difference will be the uh, discount on the bond so the discount on the bond so if we record this note that the the accounts are the same but the amounts are going to differ and that's that's what's going to happen using the effective method as opposed to a straight line method so then we're just going to say that the bond interest is going to go up in the debit direction bringing net bringing expenses up net income down we have the cash going down and then uh, we have the bond interest uh, <laughs> the discount on the bond is going to be decreased so this discount is decreasing so if we compare our totals to our table then we can say that before we did the second one the the discount here matched the discount after the first payment and then of course the carrying amount is going to be the 100,000 minus the 2723 and that's going to be the 97 uh, 277 now we did our second payment and here we're, here's where our discount is that matches our table after the second payment and then of course the carrying amount is now going to be the 100 thousand minus the one eight five nine or the ninety eight one uh forty one so our table here should you know tie out to our our accounts as we post this information for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info